I used to be able to control an assembly walking up and down with your eyes and you just looked and they, I've lost it entirely. Um, moving into the next strategy now, looking at the National um, Self-Evaluation Toolkit. And this is an opportunity to start to put some flesh on the bones, hopefully. Of, this is a re re right at the front end of the, this process. And, I'll, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about the, the contract and the arrangements we have with Estin and OECD, but we're right at the front end of it. So if you're expecting a fully populated um, self evaluation toolkit that reflects everything that was said this morning, uh, and you just have to fine tune it, um, I'm sorry to disappoint you. Uh, come back to the relationship between uh, co-construction and ownership, uh, but it isn't, I promise you, just a blank sheet of paper. Um, as you know, the challenge um, around developing a new framework for evaluation and accountability arose out of the, the conference last year. We, we, we followed up on some of the actions that we uh, committed to then, and we've had the consultation on things like uh, teacher assessment and publication at school level. The final um, response to the uh, consultation will be coming out in May, but I generally believe you will be uh, encouraged by what comes from there as it's that, that, that positive message about um, how we use information to evaluate the progress and achievements of schools and how helpful it is to have some of that information in the public domain. Uh, we would probably, li probably likely to um, continue to look at that at a national level uh, on the impact of, of work, but we're, we're, you need to wait until May in terms of that detail comes out. But uh, I say you should be encouraged by it. Um, but you, you, you challenged us to look at this uh, national framework, and since then we've had, uh, I've had numerous engagements with groups of head teachers. Steve Vincent, one of the deputy directors, has been working with, with groups of schools as well. And it's clear to me that you want us to work together uh, to determine what we think is important, what you think is important for our schools, and then put that framework in place that genuinely values all of the things that we believe to be important in schools. And, <coughs> Uh, colleagues uh, have raised questions uh, and challenges around that this morning. As I introduce Melia and Marco, um, it might be helpful if I say to you that everything really needs to be put on the table. Um, we're not looking just to tweak level two plus. We're not looking to do all of this overnight, but we're serious about wanting to offer the opportunity to really shift what we're looking at what we uh, monitor, what we evaluate, what we assess, and how we use that uh, eventually in terms of accountability. So over the years, it's been suggested that uh, we should build a self-evaluation around aspects of effective learning organizations, and particularly from those people who've been heavily involved in that program, and that we as leaders should be open to evaluating the effectiveness of our leadership. Um, this self-evaluation framework, I expect to uh, be extended to look at the self-evaluation of regions, local authorities, and national governments. So as leaders of, at each of those levels, we look at the impact of our work, um, particularly as it impacts on schools, but also impacts on individual pupil progress. And I'd expect you to want to say things in this discussion, this workshop, about um, the need to evaluate pupil progress and how we can break that down, and how we can exemplify that uh, within the framework. Similarly, uh, we know that the best outcomes come at the end of a long process of effective learning, and how do we measure and evaluate effective learning within this framework? Finally, we're committed to the new curriculum for Wales, and maybe we should be considering and acknowledging schools for the offering of the breadth of the curriculum and, and how relevant that curriculum is to the community it serves. So, um, in, in, in short, I'm encouraging you in this session not to think backwards, uh, to be ambitious, but at the same time rooted in some of the strong messages we had this morning in terms of practicability. As we move from this afternoon in tomorrow, we will be dealing with the stark reality. We have to move from where we are now to a period particularly around the implementation of the new curriculum, but we don't have to wait for that before we may take some big steps. But we will have to move from where we are now uh, to what you are going to be discussing today around how we apply that, um, this new framework to what we're doing. So I encourage you to be open-minded. I encourage you to be ambitious about it. 
And I uh, said, so there, there will be a session and there will be feedback at the end as to where we go next with this. But the, the minister decided, following the challenge of last year and the work that we've done with both our head teacher representatives groups and with our partners to, to think outside the box and to go to OECD and ESTIN and ask them to work uh, collaboratively to deliver on this, this, this project and this programme. Ultimately, it will be the first all Wales, I believe, um, uh, model framework that uh, will be able to be embedded across all of our schools. So th there's no short uh, level of challenge in this task, but I genuinely believe the capacity from our, my experience of working very collaboratively with Estin in my two years, in my two and a half years in my current role, but also working with OECD, bringing together those uh, two sets of experience, the skill sets of those two organizations is, is just the mixture we want to have the autonomy, not only to develop the framework, but to develop the framework with you and for you, because ultimately the true test for me is whether genuinely the people in this room feel ownership of what will emerge in terms of the, uh, the framework. So with that, I'm delighted to invite Myla and, and Marco to the stage to uh, lead this session. Okay, starting with uh, a short overview. We'll really keep it short by design because we really want to hear from you. So this is really by design where you're only going to see a few slides, which is exceptional because mostly if you ask people from the OECD to present, they're going to give you at least 50 slides. This is not going to be the case. So briefly back to so the why and the how. It's actually been discussed. We're going to have uh, a, key, a set of key questions which we want you to answer, which we're not going to answer for you, and the plenary discussion. Very briefly, the international context, because we are the OECD, so we need to give it so. What you're going through, the development process of a self-evaluation toolkit, currently calling it toolkit, also the, the name, by the way, is up for, for grabs, that's also for you to say. We're seeing internationally a trend in the last 20 years, much more towards school self-evaluations, become much more prominent. It's in the context, of course, of the growing uh, autonomy that schools have been giving in the last 30 years. Now, the OECD did a review, I think it's five years now ago, when a big report came out. It was probably one of the biggest that we've ever done. We looked at some 30 uh, education systems um, at assessment evaluation and the frameworks as a whole. And, and one big piece was of that, the school self-evaluation. The lessons which I'm presenting here now, and which actually also influenced some of our reports, I think what is it we released last year, and the Wells Reform Journey, the Rapid School Assessment, but also the one already in 2014 where very much inspired by that and, and drawing from these lessons. So what we do see is that school self-evaluation has really gained in, in, uh, in prominence in the last years. That has implications because we also need to be clear, of course, what rigorous uh, school self-evaluation should be. Stepping back a bit. So what we did see is a lot of countries have identified uh, criteria. So what do you consider quality? Well, we just heard about the framework of what, what, what is a good school in, in uh, in Scotland. We've seen them internationally, many of those instruments. It's very much what we consider some of the better ones, and we make some judgments about this in uh, this analysis as well, is the ones that have been designed with the profession and actually by the profession. So I think Wheels is really drawn from that, that international good practice. Uh, so these tools and, and instruments have been developed. They often go much further than just a booklet, but it's also often in terms of uh, capacity building. So I actually don't like the term capacity building because that seems to be something that you do external to people. I prefer the, the term that you use in Wales is professional learning where you're really evoking the capacity in the system. So that's very much part of this exercise as well. But there needs to be attention to making sure that people are comfortable and, and have this think or consider they have the skills to take forward this self-evaluation process. The engagement with the community is essential. So that's goes beyond the school. Students is very important. I've worked it now quite intensely for the last, especially the last two years now. And every time the student voice comes up, the pupil voice comes up, and I think you take it very seriously and rightfully. So um, my, my guess is that, that they will also frame quite, quite prominently in the, the toolkit that you're going to develop or that will develop with yourselves. 
and the promotion of peer learning is what we're seeing. So around the self-evaluation process we see in a lot of countries, uh, countries like New Zealand and, and Flanders, Belgium, or even the Netherlands, we see a lot of collaboration between schools happening to, to learn from each other, being a critical friend role and drawing from each other's strengths. Also there I must say that, that compared to internationally you're very well positioned. We see a lot of collaboration uh, and sincere collaboration happening between the schools. I if we're just stepping back a few years, I was part of the review team uh, in 2013. That has grown exponentially. Right? The system infrastructure you put in place with the regional consortia, other players, I think you're actually very well positioned to take that next step to a, a new, out of the box thinking, self evaluation toolkit or whatever we're gonna, you want to call it. Um, I'm going to speak in, in Welsh, so you'll need your uh, headphones. Um, Oran y cyd destun Cymreig, um, nid i clywed yn barod bore me bod bob agwedd bron o addysg yng Nghymru wedi newid neu yn newid. A, ac dyma'r newid mwyaf yn yn mrofiad i, um, yn yn ngyrfa proffesiynol i, yn newid mwyaf sylfaenol dwi'n teimlo yn addysg yng Nghymru ers yr wyth degau a'r naw degau. Pryd hynny roedd system addysg Cymru yn debyg iawn i un lloegr. Um, ond bellach maen nhw'n wahanol ac yn gwahaniaethu fwy fwy. Ac yn benodol mae'r cyfeiriad yn newid yng Nghymru. Fel mewn nifer o wledydd eraill, fel glywon i uh, y bore yma, tuag at ddiwylliant o gyd adeiladu, o gyd weithio ac o hunan wella. Enghraifft, O'r cyd adeiladu yma, wrth gwrs ydy'r ffordd, mae'r cricilum newydd yn cael ei ddatblygu. Ond mae diwygio addysg yn llawer mwy na cricilum newydd yn unig. Mae'n cynnwys pedwar amcan, ac un ohonyn nhw yw datblygu system asesu, gwerthuso ac atebolrwydd gadarn. Mae diwygio addysg yng Nghymru wedi selio ar hunan wella, ac felly mae angen hunan arfarnu o ansawdd uchel. Ar hyn o bryd, mae hunan arfarnu a chynllunio gwella yn ymrywio o ran ansawdd yng Nghymru. Mae gennyn ni arfer ar ddechog, wrth gwrs, ond mae'n un o'r meysydd ar olygu gwana. A lle ma gwendidau, mae hunan arfarnu yn ddigwyddiad, yn rhywbeth i eraill, nid proses sy'n allweddol i wella ysgol. A dyw e ddim yn help, wrth gwrs, bod yna nifer o fframweithiau hunan arfarnu a gwelliant yn bodoli. Um, so I'm not going to repeat what you've heard excellently expressed this morning. I just want to summarise that there are currently several self-evaluation and improvement frameworks. Um, so there is an argument for developing a common understanding of what we mean by good self-evaluation and improvement planning. One framework um, that we can all agree on and all use, including the inspectorate and, and the consortia as a basis for our work. And that's the purpose of this project, to develop that common understanding and agreed framework through a process of co-construction. So co-construction means that we're here to listen to your ideas. So now it's, it's over to you to begin the design stage. The, there are three questions that we'd like the tables to discuss. You've got 45 minutes um, what works, what doesn't work, and what would you like to see included in the new framework? And after you've discussed that, uh, we'll have uh, a plenary, and we'd like each table to feed back very briefly um, some comments on each of the three questions. So you'll have to nominate uh, a spokesperson. Um, so I hope that's perfectly clear. The intention is co-construction. We genuinely uh, want to hear what you have to say. It is the beginning of this process. Um, we're very high tech. We've got a piece of paper for you to actually fill in the questions and, and, and we'll be collecting those and that will form the, the starting point of the project. 
We don't want to influence your line of thought at the moment, so I'm just going to leave it at that. So your 45 minutes um, starts now.